Can you tell me what meconium aspiration is? So it's a inhalation of meconium that's actually in the amniotic fluid around the baby that's sort of taken into the lungs of the baby. Um, and it's not sure exactly when it happens. So often we're kind of stressed out about it happening right at birth. But it seems like uh, the babies who have trouble, big trouble, with a aspirating meconium into their lungs, they may have done so quite a bit before that, hours, days, possibly weeks beforehand. Mm. Um, so how would you treat a baby coming in today with meconium aspiration? Initially it would be just monitoring, observation. So for example, just to sort of take you through an example of where you're taken to see a baby, a case of a baby with that or with this problem. So just as a, a, a lead into it, we're called a lot to mothers who've got, who there's meconium in the amniotic fluid, about one in five births in fact, a lot. And of those, there might be one in five of those who actually have meconium when we look down at their larynx and trachea to see if there's anything stuff there that we have to go down and suction it. So the babies we suction to clear it out are babies who are not crying strongly, they're not breathing strongly, they're kind of flat and sleepy. So and then of those babies we suction, probably about one in five of those babies actually have significant meconium aspiration syndrome. And so the syndrome then would be where they're labor breathing, needing oxygen, breathing fast, in distress. So those babies then, we give them plenty of oxygen. We clear their airways as best we can. And uh, we put them on monitors for blood pressure. We give an intravenous, keep them nice and stable with their temperature and fluid balance. And we take it from there. So the babies who are let's say the extreme, the sickest babies that who have lots of problems, they need things like lots of oxygen, up to 100% oxygen. They may need uh, extra medication to boost their blood pressure, to keep the blood pressure nice and high, to keep, sort of push the circulation or the blood into the lungs to pick up as much oxygen as possible, as it were. And they may need bronchial or pulmonary vasodilators. So the one that's used uh, now is inhaled nitric oxide. Uh, so that's been, been used for the last 10 years or so. Um, so it's a, nitric oxide is a chemical that uh, dilates blood vessels. That's the way it, way it works mostly in the body. So it works in the blood vessels all over the body. But when you inhale it, it actually just selectively dilates the blood vessels in the lungs. It, so it's absorbed, it, take, it goes into your air sacs and is absorbed into the lungs and directly then the blood vessels in that area, it dilates them. So any little bit of air that's getting into those air sacs then have got a little neighboring dilated blood vessel that's got uh, red blood cells in it to pick up some oxygen. So that's the, the idea is to get little bits of blood flow. So there's two problems with this severe meconium aspiration. There's not a good enough air coming in and out and there's not enough blood flow through the lungs and you have to match those to get them right. So the, that the inhaled nitric oxide has been a huge benefit to improve the circulation in the lungs a bit. Other things which have been done for years has been having the baby on a respirator, on a ventilator, helping with their breathing strength, give them a boost with their breathing effort. Uh, sometimes give them sedation because they often struggle and fight and so it gets to get them to relax and, and sort of accept the treatment that you're giving as it were. They're, these are big babies usually, full term babies, so they're, they're keen to uh, fight you. They don't want tubes in their windpipe or anything like that. So, uh, as you can imagine. And uh, so then, uh, so those would be, so it's fairly simple, straightforward things we do. The nitric oxide is the sort of, only kind of a more sort of a unique thing we would do. 
then an, yet another option is where you put, the, if you're really struggling with low blood oxygen and you can't get it to rise any bit at all, but the baby is hanging in there, you know, they haven't crashed or had cardiac arrest, then you move them to a center where they do ECMO. So ECMO is this extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And so with that, it's basically a kind of a bypass situation where you're bypassing the lungs. Uh, you've got a, a blood vessel that's hooked in to a membrane oxygenator outside of the body you know, in a machine. You run the blood through that to oxygenate the blood, get rid of carbon dioxide, and you, you run that blood back into the baby's arterial circulation. So it's basically trying to do the work of the lungs for two, three, four days perhaps until the lungs heal a little bit. Um, those would be the main things. One other thing that's been touted a lot as being useful these days, uh, but there's debate about it, is giving surfactant. Surfactant is what premature babies don't have enough of in their lungs. It keeps your air sacs open. We all have it. And people think that when you've got all this meconium, which is basically fetal feces uh, content, it, uh, it disrupts that for surfactant. It doesn't work well. So if you give extra surfactant, it might compensate for that. So those would be the main treatments we give. So how has the treatment of meconium aspiration changed in, say, the last 20 years? I would think it actually backs up onto the obstetric side of things where the improvements have been. So when I was in training back in Dublin a long time ago, I'm not going to reveal how long ago that <laughs> was, but I'll tell you how old and ancient I am. Uh, the, a lot of the births or the pregnancies were allowed to go to 42 weeks, two, three, four weeks past the due date. The rate of meconium goes way higher after 40 weeks as the babies tend to poo, for want of a better expression, a bit more after they've passed their due date and so more risk of inhaling it. And maybe there's also the placenta runs out of steam towards the end of pregnancy so there may be some more stress on the baby and low oxygen in the baby and it's thought that that low oxygen may actually stimulate this fetus to pass meconium more readily from pooping from the stress basically and also uh, uh, causing this constricted blood vessels in the lung that I talked about. So uh, you were asking me uh, what sort of has changed. So the obstetricians, they intervene earlier. They don't, they induce labors with it that go overdue. That's one of the big things. And then I think our breathing supports where our respirators are a bit better, they're a bit more gentle. And there's the nitric oxide. That would be the other big thing. So a lot of the kids who actually get the nitric oxide, they don't need to go on to have that ECMO, that exchange going on uh, bypass machine.